Hey, this is Pastor Kevin Colley. Welcome back to the Antioch United Methodist Church YouTube channel. This is my message for Sunday, September 12th, 2021, which happens to be my 50th birthday. So I'm glad you're watching this video, but please do come to our church. I would love to have you join us on my birthday. You turn 50 one time, and so I would love for you to honor us with the uh, delight of your presence on my birthday. We are at 3614 North State Highway H in Springfield, Missouri, 65803. That's also the address to mail in your offering if you would like to, to support our church. You can also go to our website, which will be down below in the uh, description. It is www.antiochumc.info, I-N-F-O. I want to talk today about not allowing yourself to stay discouraged. In John 14, verse 1, Jesus was facing his darkest hour. He described what was coming up in great detail. And he said in verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And that's the essence of this message in this video. Don't allow, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let the ugly in others ruin the beauty in yourself. Don't let the world discourage you. If you get discouraged, don't stay discouraged. Don't let people keep you disappointed. People may disappoint you. Happens to me all the time. But don't let them keep you disappointed, keep you angry and resentful. It's not worth it. God is faithful. You are strong. Don't wait until all of your problems are solved and conditions are perfect in your life before you live in peace and happiness. Begin now to be in peace. Begin now to be happy. King David had his share of problems. But in Psalm 34, starting at verse 1, he said, I will praise the Lord how often? At all times. He said, I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. He said, let all who are helpless take heart. That means take courage, be full of courage. Now, who are the helpless? Obviously, those who are sick, incapacitated, disabled in some way. But the helpless also refers to who you are on the inside. Are you helpless? Are you broken? Are you depressed? Are you overwhelmed? Do you feel emotionally helpless? Do you feel like you're drowning by life? Stressed out? That verse says, I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Have courage. Rise up in faith. In verse 4, he said, I pray to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. King David didn't say that he didn't have any fears. He did have fears. King David was as human as you and I. To be afraid is natural. To be freed from all your fears is supernatural. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to get anxious. It's okay to have anxiety. It's normal and human to get worried and nervous sometimes. But King David said, when he called upon the Lord, the Lord freed him from how many of his fears? All of his fears. And the Lord will do the same for you. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In verse 5, King David said, Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. It's not God's will for you to walk around every day discouraged, with a darkened face, upset, downcast, living in depression, living in sadness and stress. In verse 6, King David said, In my desperation I prayed and the Lord listened. Again, 
King David never said that he didn't have times of desperation. He most likely did have times of desperation. Desperation means you're desperate. And what kind of things make you desperate? You feel overwhelmed by problems, or you only have one or two problems, very few, but you can't solve those problems. You're at your wit's end. You tried so much and nothing works. That's when desperation sits in. Well, King David can relate. And he said, in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. He didn't say that because he followed God, he didn't have any troubles. Everyone who follows God and those who don't follow God, all of us have troubles. God saves you from all your troubles. The Bible doesn't say that if you become a Christian and obey God, that you won't have troubles. You have troubles, I have troubles. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was very clear. He said in John 16, 33, in this world you will have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a, a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. It says, But we have one, that's Jesus, who was in every sense tempted as we are, just like we are, yet without sin. This verse says that we do not have a high priest, again, that's Jesus Christ, who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. That means that Jesus Christ can sympathize with our weaknesses. Have you ever been tempted to give up because you feel overwhelmed with everything? Have you ever felt alone, isolated, forgotten or ignored? Have you ever been tempted to get very angry and resentful because of, of how bad someone hurt you? Well, Jesus knows how you feel. He was in every sense tempted like we are, yet without sin. Don't let your circumstances discourage you to the point of giving up, giving up on God giving up on worshiping God, giving up on praying. Since this is the message that I'm preaching on my birthday, I want to tell the, the backstory behind my birth. My mother and father tried for many years to have a baby. They tried for years, no conception. They became frustrated. Then they had a conception, but that resulted in a miscarriage. And then another miscarriage. And then they conceived and carried the baby to full term, but then the, the baby was born dead, a stillborn. At that point, it had been many years that, that my parents were trying to have a baby. My mother was ready to give up. I can't blame her. Who could? Who could blame her? She wanted to just stop trying and simply adopt. Now, adoption is a wonderful option. My father, however, said, no, not yet. Let's just try for a little longer. And then if we can't conceive and have a child, then we'll go to adoption as plan B. Well, my parents tried to conceive a little longer, and then my mother got pregnant, and then she carried me full term, and she gave birth, and that was me, their only child. So what I get from that is that sometimes you shouldn't give up. What's meant to be will find a way. Sit with me. What's meant to be will find a way. Now, if my parents had meant by God's will 
to adopt the child, then that would have happened. And that would have been a very good option. I know people that have adopted, and it's a wonderful situation, a wonderful, loving family that, that they create together with mom and dad and adopted children. But I was meant to be here, thank God. So what's meant to be will find a way. Do not let your heart be troubled and discouraged when you try at something and it's not working out. If it's meant to be, it will find a way. If it's God's plan for your life, it will find a way. So sometimes we shouldn't just get discouraged and quit on something too soon. Sometimes it's good to wait upon the Lord. Wait and pray and keep working towards your goal. And this applies not only to the big things like having children, but it also applies to everyday hassles. The verse that says, do not let your heart be troubled, that applies to everyday irritations and annoyances. For example, my wife went to Lowe's recently. She got some things, went to the checkout counter, signed the check. The cashier said, our machine is declining your check. It's not a problem with the machine, so there must be something wrong with your checking account. Well, of course, my wife got upset. Who wouldn't? But she left there and she didn't allow herself to get too upset. She put John 14, 1 into practice. Do not let your heart be troubled. The very fact that Jesus said, do not let, do not let your heart be troubled means it's in your hands. It's in my hands. We are in charge of our own attitude. We can choose thoughts that accelerate anxiety or calm it down. It's up to us. So my wife did not allow herself to get too upset that there may be something wrong with our checking account. She calmly contacted the bank and found out that the cashier at Lowe's was mistaken, that there was nothing wrong with our account. Now, if there would have been something wrong with our checking account, that wouldn't have been the end of the world. In fact, usually nothing is the end of the world. Most things that we face are not the end of the world. Most things that we get all upset about are not the end of the world. So whatever you're facing, you know what? It's not going to be the end of the world. It's not going to be the end of your world. Do not let your heart be troubled. Before getting too upset about things, before getting too upset about bad news, practice the pause. Pause and wait before you have all the information. Pause and wait before you pray and put it in God's hands. Pause and wait and try a little more before you choose to take a different option. Sometimes you get into a situation and it seems awful and difficult and, and stressful and, and, and wrong and things end up working out. Take a look at Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. The apostle Luke wrote this. He said, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. It is kind of insinuated that she was being sarcastic. Verse 18, she kept this up for many days. And finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. 
At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, their slave was no longer their slave, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates, that is, the, the officials, the, the law enforcement of that time, they ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Wow. What did Paul and Silas do to get this? After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received the, these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now think about this. Two Christian men, two Christian missionaries were out spreading the gospel, not hurting anyone. A girl was a slave to people who wanted to use her for fortune telling. All that Paul did was release her from slavery. He cast out whatever spirit was in her. And I can't personally relate to casting out spirits. I have never cast out a spirit that I'm aware of. So maybe fortune tellers have a spirit within them. I don't know. All I know is what they did for the girl was a good thing, a positive thing. They got her out of a slavery situation. And obviously, that's a good thing. So for doing a good deed, Paul and Silas get seized and beaten and arrested and put into not just a jail cell, but a dungeon. A dungeon. Now, at this point, Paul and Silas could have said, well, this is awful. Look at what we get for serving God. You know, this is not worth it. Why should we serve Christ if this is what's going to happen to us? You know, Paul and Silas could have erroneously concluded that serving God is not worth it. And many people come to that conclusion. A lot of, of Christians, they serve God, they love God, they obey God, and they have problems. They have tragedies. And many of those Christians give up on God and give up on obeying God. And they stay home from church. And not because of COVID either. And they conclude that this stuff is not worth it. Why should I bother? I get treated the wrong way. I get mistreated. I get abused and neglected. Why should I do this anymore? Why should I trust in God and believe in God? That's why I say when you have problems, when people come against you, when you have difficult circumstances, practice the pause. Wait and don't allow yourself to become too discouraged or disappointed. There will always be circumstances and people that come against you, that, that perhaps people hurting you or at least not liking you or rejecting you or ignoring you or dismissing you or criticizing you. It's not a sign that obeying God is not worth it. People hurting you or coming against you is not a sign that the Bible is false and made up in fairy tales. Having problems and temptations and difficulties is not a sign that there's no God or that prayer doesn't work. Jesus Christ had lots of problems. He was constantly criticized and belittled and demeaned. He was constantly rejected. The Bible calls him, in the book of Isaiah, a man of sorrows, fully acquainted with grief. People will give you grief. It's not a sign that being a Christian is not worth it. Problems and difficulties are not indicators that your, your prayers don't work. 
Paul and Silas were locked up in prison in the inner dungeon, and they still did not say, this Bible stuff doesn't work. This religion stuff is, is just baloney, nonsense. Let's just quit all this and go back to our old lives. And many Christians do. Many Christians give up on God. They give up on religion and Christianity, become atheists, they become agnostics, and they act as if there is no God. Those are the shallow ones, by and large. Now, I can sympathize with people that try God, they, they live the Christian life and have problems. It's not always easy. As we see right here in Acts 16. But problems, difficulties, people's drama, even tragedies are not signs that the Bible is fairy tales and that there is no God. That's all not true. There is a God. We all face problems, but sometimes you got to wait before you see what God has in store for you. And sometimes you got to praise God and celebrate and rejoice in the Lord and pray and, and declare God's goodness even when your life is not always good. Sometimes you have to just praise God. That's why King David said in Psalm 34, I will praise the Lord at all times. His, his praise will continually be on my lips. Part-time Christians fall by the wayside all the time. Sometimes you gotta praise God and get happy and get into your joy zone even when you have things coming against you and people coming against you. And that's what we see in Acts 16, verse 25. It says, about midnight, when everyone else was asleep, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Like this. You're going to sing praise to God while you're in prison? But verse 26. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once... All the, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped and because he would face stiff penalties by the Roman authorities if he, a jailer, allowed people prisoners to escape. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? The most important question to ever ask. This was the one thing, this, this earthquake and the, the prison doors flying open, that was the one thing that made this Roman jailer, this Roman guard, become humbled and actually want to get saved and want to know how to get saved. Nothing else would have worked to change him. God knew exactly what this man needed to get saved. And God knows exactly what your lost son or daughter or cousin or granddaughter needs to get saved. And God will do it for them. Verse 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the, of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. The jailer brought Paul and Silas to his home. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. 
The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. And that happened because back in verse 25, the two Christians, Paul and Silas, they chose not to stay discouraged. I'm sure they, they at first felt discouraged. At first, they must have felt disappointed and upset. But they chose not to stay discouraged. They chose not to stay disappointed. They chose to praise God while in prison. They chose to pray while their ankles and wrists were chained up in the stocks. You got to make the choice to rejoice even during your bad days or bad weeks. Make the choice to rejoice. Say it with me. Make the choice to rejoice. This story and many others in the Bible shows us that life is not always fair, even for Christians. Number two, though, don't wait for perfect conditions in your life to get happy, to rejoice, to be at peace. And number three, ultimately, at some point, God will deliver you. He will deliver you. God delivered Paul and Silas from this prison, this, this dungeon. God delivered Daniel from the lion's den. God delivered uh, uh, David from Goliath. God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God will deliver you. God delivered Jesus from death itself and the grave. So you might get upset. Don't stay upset. You might get discouraged, disappointed. Don't stay that way. Practice the pause before you get all stirred up in your anger or anxiety. Pause, wait, pray and praise God before things get better. Pray and praise God before everything in your life is just the way you want it. Pray and praise God in your own dungeon, in your own darkness, in your own pit. Many people are waiting for things to get better before they're happy. Many people who used to be church members are waiting for our sanctuary to be filled before they come back. Many people in society are waiting until they, they see uh, irrefutable proof with their eyes that there is a God before they believe. Don't wait. Begin now to have faith. Begin now to trust in God. Begin now to, to, to keep on moving forward. Begin now to call upon God. Pray and ask for help. Begin now to obey God in, in every area of your life. My life, my very existence is proof that even when you get knocked down, discouraged, disappointed, you got to keep trying. You got to keep trying. I'm 50 years old on this Sunday. I am so glad that my dad said, let's keep trying. Let's keep trying. If he had not said that, I wouldn't be here. Sometimes you got to keep trying, keep praising God, keep praying, keep obeying God in every area of your life. And your, your turnaround is coming. Your breakthrough is on its way. Your turnaround may not happen tomorrow or the next day. But God will deliver you and bring you the victory if you will keep praying, keep praising God, keep trying Push through your emotions. Don't be led by your emotions. Be led by your faith in our Lord and Savior and his teachings. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this message, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you would, I would encourage you to support our church in this online ministry. Again, I do encourage you to send your best check to our church Antioch United Methodist Church, 3614 North State Highway H, Springfield, Missouri, 65803. 
And if you're ever in our area, anywhere near Springfield, Missouri, please join us Sunday morning at 8.30 where masks are required or 11 o'clock service where masks are optional once you find your seat. I promise you, you will be warmly welcomed and you will be inspired by the music and God's word. If you want to mail in your offering, that's great. Or you can go to our website, which is down below in the description. It is AntiochUMC.info. Thank you so much. God bless.